By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to the Sin City Open 2023, because this is magic from Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm so excited to show you this. I'm really looking forward to it. It is EC magic. That means Eternal Central Rules. I don't have a lot of EC games on the channel, so I'm really looking forward to this. And uh, I think this was just a great event. I'll put some uh, information about the event in the description below if you would like to know more. I can already tell you that there were 52 old schoolers attending this event from 11 different states in the States and one Canadian. And I don't believe you had a single European in there, so maybe that will come next year in 2024. Anyway, we have a pretty cool match that we can look at today. We have Jesse who's playing a line dip deck and he's playing against Tim who's on Reanimator. Now before I start with the deck decks, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also skip that section of the video, go straight to the action. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. As for now, I'm going to start with the deck deck. I'm going to start with the deck of Jesse, a line dip. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Jesse, and oh boy, you're not making it easy for me, Jesse. Everything's mixed up, so I'm going to try to make sense of it all. Although it's a pretty well-known strategy, I have to say, and I do love, absolutely love your playmat, man. The Sarah Angel with the Shades, absolutely epic. I believe that's also you guys or the Sarah Angels from Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. Please correct me in the comments if I'm completely wrong, but I think... That's, uh, that's what's up. I love I love the logo, love the playmat. And actually this deck is looking pretty fierce as well. Now, first of all, one thing you got to know about Eternal Central is you can play with four strip mines. And I believe we see at least three strip mines in this deck photo. I'm trying to maybe find number four, but I can see three on the right side of the deck photo. Now the cards at the, at the bottom are, I believe, your sideboard. And what's really cool for me to see is that Library of Alexandria in Eternal Central is actually a sideboard card, or at least... It is in your deck. I find that super interesting. Maybe you can let me know the the thoughts behind sideboarding a Library of Alexandria. Is that maybe because so many decks play very heavy on land destruction that you're going to put it in the sideboard or maybe you only want to board it in against decks that have a lot of draw seven effects. I mean, those both could be viable reasons to play it in the sideboard instead of the main board. I also think that when you're playing in a four strip environment, you obviously have to really take care of your mana base. And the thing with Library of Alexandria, yes, it is ridiculously good, but, you know, with four strips, it's easy to take care of. And remember, it taps for a mana, but it's colorless, right? So when you're like Jesse and you're playing a lot of different colors, like you're splashing your Demonic Tutor, for instance, then maybe that colorless mana isn't that great in this format. So those could all be reasons why you would put it in the sideboard. But still, for me, it's really funny as mainly a player that doesn't play EC to see a Library of Alexandria in a sideboard. Now, if we look at the rest of the deck, this is really your line dip uh, built, right? Savannah Lines, one white mana for 2-1. 2-1 vanilla, it's the most played vanilla in the format because you get 2 power for 1 mana. And that means that you can play your Savannah Lines turn 1 if you have one, but even better, you can kind of wait for the right moment to play it out. You can keep Counter Magic open, you can keep all your burn open. We see a Psionic Blast in this deck, Chain Lightning in this deck, Fireball, we see Lightning Bolts in this deck. Uh, of course, we also see, I believe, just one counter spell, or maybe there's a second one. We also see a mana drain, so it's not very counter heavy this deck. So it's a bit more aggro than a Line Dip Control Brew. I guess so for, for this brew, you really go turn one Savannah Lines and try to just deal as much damage with the line as you can. And then there's that other super aggro creature in the format in the form of Serendip Afrit. Serendip Afrit, of course, absolute powerhouse in almost any old school format. One blue and two to play for a 3-4 flyer that gives you, you know, deals you one damage during your upkeep. But who cares? You get to attack with it. You can turn it sideways and swing in. And I do think in a format where you also play with a lot of strip mines, it means that you don't have to be that afraid of, for example, a Maze of If, you know, because you have more answers to your Maze of If. If you play, in this case, with three strip mines, you already have three answers to a maze. Usually, you also play with the Chaos Orb. So there are just a lot of ways to get rid of a, of a maze. So that makes your Serenip a free slightly better in this format, in my humble opinion. Now, um, yeah, if we look at the rest of the deck... It's nice to see like that one black bordered Sarah Angel in there. I think that's very cool, especially when you're part of the uh, of the uh, of the Angels of old school, of course. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, you've got two Sarah Angels in this deck, so that's pretty sweet. And yeah, I think this is just going to be a really quick deck. I know that you're playing against Reanimator today. Reanimator usually needs a little bit more time, so maybe you can play so quickly that uh, in this case, Tim is dead before he gets to uh, start and have his whole Reanimator strategy go off. So. Who knows? This, I think this is going to be a tough match for Tim. Talking about that, let's take a look at his deck. 
And here we see the deck of Tim. Now, Tim, man, this is a beautiful deck. I know you're also a patron of the channel. You have to, we have to make an episode. Well, I guess we're making an episode with the deck, but I would love to play against this as well. I love Reanimator, and I'm always so impressed when I see a Reanimator list because, I mean, look at those four Bazaar of Baghdad and look at those three All Hallows Eve. How cool is that? Now, if you're not familiar with those cards, I'm going to tell you what they do. So first off, Bazaar of Baghdad is a land from Arabian Nights. It was considered one of the worst lands of Arabian Nights. How funny is that? Because you tap it, you draw two cards, but you got to discard three cards. So why would you want to have, you know, a land that lets you draw two, but you have to discard an extra one? So you have to discard three. That's card disadvantage, right? Well, not when you're playing Reanimator, because when you combine it with this sorcery from Legends, All Hallows Eve, things start to get interesting. All Hallows Eve is just such a weird card. It's two black and two. It says exile All Hallows Eve with two scream counters on it. Yes, they're called scream counters. At the beginning of your upkeep, if All Hallows Eve is exiled with the Scream Counter on it, remove a counter from it. If there are no more Scream Counters on it, put it into a, into your graveyard, and each player, so also your opponent, returns all creature cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. That means that when you play this, the first turn around, you know, when it's your upkeep, you only take one Scream Counter off, so nothing happens. But the turn after that, that's when the magic happens, and all those creatures in your graveyard get back onto the battlefield. Now, remember that Bazaar of Baghdad? With Bazaar of Baghdad, you can draw two cards, but you can discard the cards that you don't want. And what cards don't you want? Those big, beefy creatures that you can see here in the deck of Tim. You want to discard your Shivan Dragon, your Tetravis, your Sarah Angel, right? Maybe even your Often Troll. Sorry, your Setch Troll, I mean. Who cares? You just want to put as many creatures in the bin as possible, play out your All Hallows Eve, and then the fun can begin, right? All those creatures will rise from the grave, and they'll come back on the board. I mean, how I'm so looking forward, Tim to see you pull this off. And I know like Jesse's deck is quick, so maybe you're gonna die before you get to do it. But I, I am I am praying to the magic gods. I wanna see at least one All Hallows Eve activation in this match. And yes, I'm slightly pro Tim for this one. Sorry, Jesse, I mean, you've got a great deck, but I'm slightly pro All Hallows Eve Bazaar of Baghdad just because you don't see it that often. And it's also an old school classic. Anyway, enough of me admiring All Hallows Eve and Bazaar of Baghdad. Let's go to the games here at the Sin City Open. Game number one on the left, the line dip player. On the right, we have the reanimator player. And a special thanks to uh, Kevon for sending me this matches, aka Flying Anger Pig. And uh, game one is about to start a reanimator player on the play, starting with a Mox Ruby and a Scrubland and passing the turn. So let's see what's going to happen next here. There is a Mox Sapphire and a Plateau, and a Savannah Lion. So this is the kind of opening that the Line Dip player wants, just early aggression. Wants to start swinging in straight away, possibly next turn playing that Surrender Befreet. Let's see if the Reanimator player can do anything about it. Cannot find a Bazaar of Baghdad. He's playing a Time Walk here. Okay, that's something, you know, taking an extra turn. Slowing down Jesse a little bit. So Jesse on Line Dip, and Tim is here on the Reanimator strategy. Finding a Plateau. Gonna tap three, possibly a set troll. Tap four instead. There's a Juzam Jin. 5-5 five, five Powerhouse, Arabian Nights. Deals one point of damage as well, just like the Serenip. But remember, it's a 5-5. Five, five. And this is good news for Tim because now Jesse cannot attack with the line. And that's exactly what his deck wants to do. Just get little points of damage in early on with the Savannah Lines. Does he have a Swords here? That's a big question. Yep, there's the Swords. Taking care of business. This means 5 life for Tim. Gonna go up to 23, take 2 damage. End up on 21, I believe. Exactly. And there we see a Tundra. Tapping the Tundra. And another line. Ooh, so the pressure is back. Now remember, he's also playing with Setch Trolls in the deck. There are only 3 to play. He's got enough mana to play one. And keep regeneration open. Okay, there's a Bazaar of Baghdad. Let the funny stuff begin, drawing two cards, and now he has to discard three. There's a trike, there's a trike. Those trikes are so good against those lines, by the way. And there's a Bazaar of Baghdad. I mean, he does have double black here because of the City of Brass, so he could play an All Hallows Eve. That would be quite spectacular. Oh, and Animate Dead also does the trick. Animate Dead, of course, also really good with a reanimator, uh, in a reanimator strategy, I should say. I meant with the Bazaar of Baghdad. So now it comes in as a 3-4 because it gets minus 1, minus 0 because of the anime dead. And yeah, I mean, you can just use those uh, those counters to kill both lines here. 
But why would he? There's no need to rush. And this is tough for Jesse. I think if you're Jesse, maybe the best thing you want to do is just play a Surrender. Or just perhaps this year... No, you don't want to attack, I guess. Maybe you just want to play out a Surrender. He is going to attack here, though. He's going for it. So this is interesting, right? Because... Exactly, like Tim has some options blocking one lion. It looks like he's taking two damage from the other. So the lion's gonna die. He's gonna take two, drop to 19. So he's really kind of, and I like this, he's being quite conservative with those counters. Like sometimes instinctively you want to say, okay, I can get a two for one. I'm just gonna take the counters off straight away. I like this strategy of Tim much, much better. Just wait and see what happens. He's already killed a lion. And I mean, if Jesse now bolts, he can still kill the other lion. So Jesse's going to tap three. And I'm expecting a Surrender Pafrit here. Oh, there's a Fireball. So he's going to play a Fireball of two on the trike. And I believe that Tim in response here will kill the Savannah and deal two points of damage to Jesse. So killing it. And then I believe two points here. Exactly on Jesse. So Jesse's going to drop to 18 and pass the turn. So this, I mean, this is not too bad, right? If you're if you're Tim, because that one tribe took out two lines and a fireball. And he's passing the turn here. And then remember, it is just going to his graveyard, which is not too bad if you play reanimator. And Jesse just passing the turn. It looks like he kind of ran out of fuel. He's gonna tap five mana. What is he gonna play next? There's a Sarah Angel. He's going to take a damage exactly from the City of Brass. But there's a Sarah Angel. 4-4 four, four Flyer. There's a Psionic Blast though. Like Psionic Blast is perfect to deal with those 4-4s. Four, Passing the turn here back to Jesse. Can he put some pressure on the board? No, he can't. Passing the turn again. And I think this is in the advantage of the, uh, the slower deck, I guess. The Reanimator Strategy deck. He could consider here using his Bazaar of Baghdad, drawing two cards, discarding three. Of course, that depends if he has another creature in hand. He could try to start digging for an All Hallows' Eve. I mean, he's got quite a lot of strong creatures in the bin. I believe two Trikes and a Sarah Angel. Playing a City of Brass and another pass. So I was expecting, like, much more aggression from Jesse in the early stages of the game, but I guess he just cannot find the Surrender Pafrits, and that trike really did a good job taking care of those two Savannah lines. He was seeing Ancestral Recall. This could be a game changer. No counterspell from Jesse here. I believe he's playing with the counterspell and a mana drain. Doesn't have it in his hand though. Three cards for Tim. I mean, this could be so decisive, right? If he can find the right cards, also more cards in hand means the Bizarre of Baghdad gets better as well because he's got more options when he has to discard. And it looks like Tim is a little bit in the tank. It's hard to see the amount of cards in hand. I believe five, but perhaps there are four. My guess is as good as yours. It's really hard to see the difference here between four and five. He's got enough mana to... Well, he doesn't have double black, so he doesn't have enough mana to play a, uh, an All Hallows' Eve. Are we going to see an animate dead here? Okay, he's going to animate the Sarah Angel. That's a 3-4 flying. And I guess that's a pretty good option. Interesting that he's playing out the Mox Sapphire. Perhaps he's got a Sheevan Dragon in hand and he wants to get to 6, so next turn he can drop a Sheevan. Because under normal circumstances, I would be tempted to keep the Sapphire in hand as a potential discard. There we see a Lightning Bolt by Jesse, and Tim is going to drop here to 14. Looks like he's going to drop two more. Does that mean that he has po possibly a Disenchant on this anime debt? That would mean the Sarah Angel would go straight back to the graveyard. There's a Disenchant. Oh, interesting. Going for the Mox Sapphire instead. So he's a little bit concerned about a potential Shivan Dragon. There's a balance. Oh, we had a balance in hand. That makes sense. Now I understand this play. Balance in hand. Now it makes absolute sense because you're going to discard the hand of Tim here. Only three lands, though. But, uh, yeah. Wow. Balance is so good in these situations. Takes away all the advantage here for, uh, for Tim. 
And also, I mean, those lands were actually really good for Tim because of the Bazaar of Baghdad, right? He could just draw cards, discard his lands. That would be really good for him. Tapping four, finding a Juzam from the top. This could be decisive. Juzam, 5-5 five, five powerhouse, of course. So now all of a sudden, Jesse's on a four-turn clock in top decking mode. That is not Grant. Can hit him here for five into the red zone. Jesse dropping to 11. There's an underground uh, C and a pass. Another card here, a Tundra and a pass. So Jesse not finding an answer. Perhaps, I mean, he's got his swords in hand. He can just play it now, but he doesn't have it. Gonna drop to six. Two more turns for Jesse, gotta find an answer. Passing the turn. Gonna drop to 10 here, Tim, but that's no problem for him. He's gonna put him on one. Passing the turn, two cards in hand there for Tim, two cards in hand for Jesse. There's a disenchant, nope. It is the end of the road, at least the end of the road in game number one here for Jesse. And I was so looking forward to an All Hallows Eve, Tim, but we still have a few games to go. Let's go to game number two and pray for that Eve. Game number two here is about to begin. So we've got Tim winning that first game. He's on the right with Reanimator on the left, Line Dip, Jesse, and he's on the play, starting here with a Mox Sapphire and a Mox Jet. And yeah, he does have a land there. I thought, do you have a land? He does. There's a Plateau into his Havana line past turn. Only three cards in hand for him, but potentially he could play a Surrender Befreet next turn. Although if he would have had it in his hand, of course, he would have played it already. Passing the turn here to Tim. Let's see what Tim can do. Tim was quite successful in the first game uh, dealing with those aggressive Savannah Lions. Now he's starting with, I believe, is that a Bazaar of Baghdad? It's hard to see. There's an attack for two, so he's going to drop to 18, it seems. It's a City of Brass. Okay, it's a City of Brass. He's going to drop to 19. He's going to kill the Lion. Going to put Jesse on 22, and Jesse's going to play another Savannah Lion in a Scrub Land and a Pass a Turn. So Tim having a full grip of cards here. There's a bad lance. He is playing, of course, with Setch Trolls. We didn't see that in game one, but he is playing with them. Okay, there's a Demonic Tutor. Is he going to tutor for the usual suspect, the Ancestral Recall, or is he going to do something else? Of course, that all depends on what's in his hand. And that is something that we don't know, so we'll just have to wait and see. He's probably going to shuffle up and pass a turn. Because he already hit his land drop. Unless, of course, he's going for, for example, a Mox or a Lotus. He could drop those straight away and get into action. First, he's shuffling up. And there we see Jesse cutting the deck, passing the turn. We do see a uh, Sheevan Dragon there in the hand of Tim. So perhaps, I mean, if he's got, for example, a Sheevan, an Anime Dead, or All Hallows Eve, maybe he looked up a Bazaar of Baghdad, which will give him the possibility to start uh, discarding those bigger creatures. Like I said, it all depends on what's in his hand. Anyway, we see another attack with the Savannah line. So Tim, you're dropping to 16. The problem, of course, here for Jesse is that he only has two cards in hand. So here we see the Bazaar of Baghdad. If Tim now again can get his bigger creatures from his yard, I mean, this could go south quite quickly for Jesse. Drawing two cards, going to discard three here. I'm expecting big creatures. Shivan Dragon. Trike and the trike is so good and a Juzan, but the trike is so good against those lions. I mean, in that regard, it's a really bad matchup for Jesse. There we see a Black Lotus. Second, the Lotus. Are we going to see an All Hallows Eve? There's an All Hallows Eve. I'm happy. I'm happy. The only thing I'm not happy about is that I want Jesse to win so we can see a third game, but I am really happy with this All Hallows Eve. And it's so interesting because when I was looking at the deck photos, I actually thought Jesse was. A favorite because I thought his deck would go faster but now that I'm looking at this match and you see how quick and how good Tim is in kind of dealing with the early threats I mean he's still on 14 he's gonna lose a counter here I mean he's not there yet but next turn he's gonna get so many creatures coming into play I mean it's insane and there's nothing that Jesse can do I mean this is not like an enchantment with counters on it this is this oil is even exiled from the game with these scream counters on it and when the last scream counter gets removed, you know, the fun happens. All the dead wake up again, you know. You get Sheevan Dragon back. 
You get uh, Triskelion, he's gets a, he gets a Juzam Jin, and he still has another Bazaar of Baghdad activation to go. And I mean, the only thing that Jesse gets back is another Savannah Lines. He will see a set stroll, by the, by the way, which is a 3-3 because uh, Tim is controlling Swamps there with the Scrubland and the Badlands. I wonder if we're going to see a Bolt here. Although a Bolt from Jesse, it doesn't really help because the next turn, the set is coming back. So it's probably better for Jesse, just if he has a Bolt, to keep it in hand. A Swords, of course, is quite good against Reanimator strategies because it exiles the creature. But still, it's looking super, super bad here. And actually talking about Exile, that Savannah Lines is in Exile. So it's not even coming back on the side of Jesse. I mean, Jesse's in a foobar situation right now. But, I mean, if he can have a balance, that, like that's the only the only thing I can think of is past turn. You know, hope for, for Tim to kind of, you know, kill a Savannah Lines and he can play a balance to kind of get back into it. I mean, this is really, really bad news for Jesse. He's trying to find a way to stop the All Hallows Eve, but there's just no way of stopping it. There's nothing you can do. Flicking through his cards, also realizing, I mean, he's already a game behind... Trying to find of a, of a way out of this. What can he do? And I, like I said, I think a balance is the only real way out of this. I mean, the mace is going to stop the bleeding a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And the line doesn't die. No. More creatures are at it. Like the dead wake up. Look at this. All Hallows Eve activation. The thing I was hoping for is becoming reality here. And um, the trike actually comes into play, I believe, exactly with three plus one plus one counters on it. And look at what a mighty force Tim now has. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. They do have summoning sickness, of course. Oh, and a time walk. Oh, okay. Mana drain. At least there's a mana drain. I'm happy for this mana drain. I mean, at least there, there, there is a chance. There is a chance for Jesse. Please, you know, top deck that balance. Maybe you got that balance in hand. Because I want to see a game number three. Jesse really needs a balance right now. I mean, he's, you know, he, he, he can maze to Sheevan. Okay, there's a bolt. Okay, on the life total of Tim, putting him on nine. I mean, if he can find enough direct damage, he can probably survive one more turn, right? He's on 22, which is pretty high. He's got the mace. He's got the line to jump, which you probably want to do because then if you draw into a balance, the balance gets better. So he's going to take a damage from his own Juzam as well. So he's dropping to eight and there's an attack full force. And look at that beautiful army. Probably going to block the Juzam, exactly. That means he's going to take seven damage, going to send back Sheevan. He's going to go to 15. Actually, 7 is not that bad. And, I mean, I like Jesse's strategy here with the... With the Lightning Bolt. He's going to lose, of course, the uh, Savannah Line using it as a chump blocker here. And, of course, I'm talking about Chain Lightning, by the way. That's the word I was looking for. The Sorcery from, uh, from Legends that can deal 3 points of damage. He's going to drop to 13, it seems. And passing the turn here. So it's not, you know, it could be worse. Playing a Mox. But now he's going to die, it seems, still. He needs... He needs something. If he doesn't have a balance, then at least he needs a Swords. Perhaps he's got a Swords in hand. I mean, he is passing the turn. Now we see... Tim dropping to seven. Remember, those strike counters can also be taken off for three points of damage after combat, of course. So that's an additional three points of damage that you got to add in your calculations. There we see a Bazaar of Baghdad activation, by the way. Putting two trikes in the bin. He's got to choose a third card in a set draw. 
And he's gonna attack here with his full force again, of course. And now I'm expecting... Okay, there's a disenchant on the trike. He's gonna do three points of damage here to Jesse. Gonna put on ten. He's gonna send back to Sheevan. Does this mean he's got one more turn to go, though? Looks like he's gonna end up on two. I mean, it's something. If you're if you're in it, you can still win it. Oh, a bolt, though. Oh, and a bolt back. He's gonna put on four. If it would have found a Cyblast. I don't think there was a Cyblast on the top. No. No, there was a Chaos Orb. But I do like the way, uh, you know, how Jesse actually played this. How he tried to kind of play towards his outs. Because that's all you can do when you're in this situation. Like, you know you're in a full bar place. All you can do is kind of take that 1% or half a percent chance that you might top deck, you know, a balance that maybe you're going to find at Cyblast. He was closer than you might think, right? Because, um, you know, Tim was on seven, Bolt would have put him on four, then with the Sionic Blast, end of the road, we would have a game number three. Anyway, it's not meant to be, but this was a really enjoy, uh, this was a great match to look at. I really enjoyed myself. I'd like to thank Jesse and Tim for showing their skills here on the channel on Timmy Talks. Thank you guys. And of course, thank everybody who was involved in the Sin City Open. And uh, if you like this tournament, I've got good news because I've got two more episodes coming up from the Sin City Open. So join me again next week for more action from this tournament for now. Thank you very much for watching. And before you go, please take a moment to subscribe if you're not a subscriber yet, to like, to comment, and to share, to all that stuff. You know what? I first need to show you that button. So subscribe and ring that bell. Exactly, I'm forgetting my own button. That is so, that is so stupid. Oh, talking about forgetting, uh, I would also like to mention that I have a Patreon page. So you can join my Patreon program on patreon.com slash timmytalks. And it already starts with $1 a month, so it's not a lot. And I mean, when you join Timmy Talks, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can play in all the online tournaments. And if you want to, you can play against me. I mean, could be fun, right? So check it out. Patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And talking about patrons, let's go to the end scroll and have a look at my fantastic, wonderful, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomaar gezien.